G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. A recent video I did when I dialed in my vice on my milling machine, I had it on a swivel table, which I thought was great. And I do like the swivel table. But what I've discovered is that swivel table takes just a little bit too much of real estate in my work area from the head to the workpiece. And when I'm using a long twist drill, I just can't get it in. So I've had to take that swivel base off. Here's a look at it, what it looks like now. I dialed in exactly the same way as I dialed it in on the previous video, but this is a little short clip of it in action and I'm doing part of the process to make the brass harp tuning picks. Okay, well, since I put this in and squared it up, I've decided that I don't really need the swivel base and I was losing a lot of real estate between the head of the machine and what I was working on. So I've decided to take it off, but I'm still very happy that I got a swivel base because I can use it when I need it, whereas if I haven't got one, I can't use it when I need it. So what I've done now is exactly the same procedure as I did before to dial this in, use the DTI. I'll tell you the size, I didn't give you the size of this. This is a 130 mil, it's a five inch jaw. Now initially I was thinking a four inch jaw, but the five inch jaw fitted okay. Might have been a little bit overkill for this size machine, but once more, if it fits, I've got a bigger area I can use. It does come in a, a two, a, a three inch and a four inch as well, and a six inch I think, but this is the five inch one. Now the jaws, I actually did take off and clean and lubricate behind them. When I put them back on, they didn't quite square up. So you can, you can see there, you've got a bit of movement in. So I'm just gonna square the, the jaws up. When it came from the factory, the jaws were square, but then I took them off and they became unsquare. I did mic them up and when I ran a DTI over them they were nice and flat. Uh, here I'm getting this precise. There, let's push that down a little bit. Now I'm going to open these up again. That's something to think of if you do pull the jaws off. Just be mindful you've got to realign them yourself. As you can tell, I've got a lot of uh, lubricant on here and it might look like an overkill, but we had some very, very torrential rain the other day. And when I came in, all these machines were covered in surface rust after 24 hours. So I have um, erred on the side of caution and made sure that I've got them well protected. And that is close enough for me. I'm not going to lose any sleep over those tools. About a quarter of the thickness of a piece of paper, which, as I've said, for my work, doesn't really warrant anything else. So now I'm going to nip these up so I know they are tight and there's no play whatsoever. As I said, these vices are very heavy. One thing to look out for, and it really is a compliment, these edges on the vice jaws are so sharp. I don't think they need to be sharp on the outside. The inside edges, yeah, sure, I'm keeping those sharp. But the outside edges, I'm just giving a couple of rubs with a diamond stone and it just takes that very, very sharp edge off. But you want them sharp on the inside for accuracy. All right. So as I said, this is a Viva milling vise, which I showed you in the previous video. And yes, I did end up getting given this one. I thought I was buying it, but I'm doing a review. I ended up getting, being able to keep it. So thank you very much, Viva, for that as well. Um, so what I'll do is we'll do an operation on it. 
What I want to do is machine up some uh, aluminium or brass blocks to put in here. So when I'm using these free 30, what are they? Free ER32 collets. By free, I mean they're not on a spindle. Um, I don't get any racking. If I go like that, there is a very, very slight amount of racking, which basically is the play in the uh, screw thread. But nothing to worry about. But I will make up some blocks the same size as these. So when I put one of these in here, I can put one on this side. When I put this in here, I'll be able to put the same size block here and that will take any of that racking right out. Very smooth operation. I'm going to take it up to the edge, touch it up, and I'm not going to over tighten it because of that racking I was talking about there, but just give it a little nip. The handle comes off so it doesn't get in the way. And as I showed in a previous video, trick of getting center. That's a feeler gauge, but you can use a razor blade or you can use um, a steel rule or something. If that isn't centered, it's going to tilt one way or the other. So if I move it towards me, you can see that lever's tilted towards the back, which means I've got to move this to the back. And you can see as I go, the gauge starts to even out. I've overshot the mark there because I've got a very very thin drill bit there. Try it there. There you go. Just about spot on. So what I'm going to do now is drill a hole straight through here. Start off slow. Build my revs up to about, oh, 500 maybe, 600. Don't really need lube with brass. This is machining brass. It's got a very small lead content in it which allows it to be machined very, very easily. Let's pull that out. And I'm through. If I was using a bigger drill bit and there was more pressure on it, I would actually support this on the outside here with a machinist jack. Which I've got to make some of those, so we might even do that as a project. All right, so that is the string hole for one of the tuning pegs if I had that um, anti rack block in the jaws I could have done this next step actually on the vise but seeing I don't I don't want to pressurize the vise in any way so I'm just going to change this pin around I can machine the other end. Look at that. Real blood. Turn that around. Put that in there. I want to have the smallest amount of overhang than I can possibly get. And I'm just going to nip this collet up. Put it back in the vise. I, I should have used soft jewels on there too. Back into the vise. It's a good thing when I've paralleled those jaws. If they are parallel, then when you're putting something in there, you can just use a ruler to make sure they're square. Pretty much is. Again, because I don't have an anti-rack block there, 
I'm not going to tighten this too much and I don't really have to. If I'm doing a lot of these I'll have a depth gauge set up like that so I can come in from the back of the vise and line up this collet block so I get it the same time, the same place every time. All right, so now what we're going to do is change the drill chuck. I'll take that drill out of there so I don't lose it. How many other people do it? You take a drill bit out and you put it on the bench and you're going to put it back later on and you forget to do it. And then all of a sudden you're down half a set of drills. All right. This has just got a threaded drawer bar that has to be loosened. And then it will actually unscrew and free the taper up. So that's a number three Morse taper and the draw bar on this particular one is half inch width. -width. Taper up there, tighten it up. There we go. Okay, so that's nice and tight. And now I've just got to line this up. With what I'm going to be milling. Alright, now I will actually use this depth gauge because I have to do four cuts. So I've got the corner of the back jaw lined up with the shoulder of the depth gauge putting it down to the back of that block. Okay so I've dialed in two mil depth of cut and we can take a two mil pass. Bearing in mind this is brass, so it's pretty soft. And I can't take the safety guard off for you to see, because it's got a micro switch on it. Complete exit. Now what I do is undo this and there we have a nice flat milled into the brass. So I've got to do this side and then the two sides and that'll give us a square six mil drive. That's pretty close to spot on for me. Again not over tightening the neck. Now, because I'm just going backwards and forwards, I'm not worrying about uphill or downhill, so I'll go back this way. There's two sides milled. Now I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and do this face here, then 180 degrees to do this face. Pop it in, line it up. A little bit of a nip, not over tighten because I haven't got that block in there. Come back towards me. Just take your time, there's no rush.
three sides. Just have to do 180 and we'll do the other side. And that will be it done. And there we have it. I'll just crack that. Grab my deburr. Just deburr it. It's brass, so it's it's no real big thing. But there is the start of a harp tuning peg. I've got the string hole here and I've got the quarter inch drive socket or drive pin at the top. This is held in the three jaw chuck. This is held in the three jaw chuck. Then I'll turn the taper, which I will do in another video because at the moment I'm just waiting for a stepped uh, tailstock bit to come because I was having problems getting right in there on the tailstock that I've got, which is, oh, it's in, the, in there at the moment. Um, so that's it. As soon as I get that, I'll actually turn the taper pin so you can see that. And then we're back down to the woodworking shop and uh, I'll see if I can fit it into the neck of one of the harps. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was the Vivor 5-inch machining vise with a swivel base that I've taken off. And if you've seen it work, it's pretty darn good. I'm very happy with it. If you're interested, check in the comments below. There's a link. And uh, for a period of time, there's a, a special price on it. And the milling machine I was using was the Optimum Optimil BF20L, which I picked up from Heron Forbes here in Brisbane. As you can tell, woodworking masterclasses horizons are being broadened. And I just love the challenge of, of learning new things and new, using new machines and just seeing what I can learn. For uh, someone that was told he should never try woodwork, should get in a job in an office because he's no good with his hands, I think oh, I'm doing all right for a beginner. <laughs> so there you go. This is Steve pulling a different shed door down this time and saying, remember to keep it sharp, keep it well lubricated, but more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself, be kind to each other, and I look forward to having your company in one of the workshops again very, very soon where we will make chips, whether they be metal or wood. God bless. Bye for now.